So welcome back. At the end of part one, we had uh, just concluded talking about which methods IFRS allows. US GAAP allows specific identification, first in, first out, weighted average, and a method called last in, first out, or LIFO. So this is the only difference between US GAAP and IFRS, where US GAAP also permits LIFO. Now, let's talk about periodic versus perpetual inventory systems. In a periodic system, we make updates to inventory at the end of every period. So typically, these periods might be months. So at the end of every month, so end of one, month one, you would make an update, then end of month two, you would make an update, and so on. Essentially, cost of goods sold and inventory values are determined at the end of a period after inventory uh, after the inventory update is made so it is necessary to maintain a purchases account which means that during this period so during period 1 you would keep track of your purchases and let's say that if you start with uh, zero inventory over here and you make purchases worth 5000 then your ending inventory over here will be 5000 at the end of the month so this is your ending inventory will be 5000 and you will so so basically what you will notice then is ending inventory is 5000 so that's one update and cogs will be calculated based on beginning inventory which is zero in our example plus 5 minus the ending inventory so beginning in inventory is zero purchases you made is five and let's say that uh, so if the ending inventory is also five that means you subtract five and cost of goods sold would be equal to zero this means that if you made purchases worth five and have ending inventory five that means that cogs was zero for the for the month or for the first period then in the next period let's say that you have purchases worth four and at the end of the period let's say that your ending inventory is one so ending inventory is one now you uh, so at the end of the month you determine that ending inventory is one then cogs for the month will be equal to beginning inventory which is now five notice that ending inventory for period one is equal to the beginning inventory for the second period so that now becomes five plus the purchases which here are four minus ending inventory is one so you calculate for the second period cogs to be nine minus one which is eight so that's how your periodic system works with a perpetual system you are using probably a computer system where you make continuous updates so as soon as you buy something or sell something inventory and cost of goods sold is updated continuously and since the updates are happening continuously the purchase account is not necessary some general points and this is important from a testability perspective as we've already said with a periodic system there are periodic updates with a perpetual system there are continuous updates now this is important for first in first out and specific identification the ending inventory and cost of goods sold is the same whether you use a periodic or a perpetual inventory system and you can actually look at some examples but i think from a exam perspective given that you just have multiple choice questions knowing this is sufficient and for lifo and average cost methods ending inventory and cogs is different when you use periodic or perpetual inventory system so depending on which system if you're using periodic or perpetual inventory system then you will get different values for ending inventory and cogs when the cost flow method is lifo and average cost to understand this fully you can look at the example in the curriculum 
or if you use Schweizer study notes then you can look at the example there too but most likely from an exam perspective as long as you memorize these two facts you should be in good shape now let's talk about the measurement of inventory value IFRS takes the lower of cost or net realizable value so there are two important points here. this has to do with the principle of conservatism in accounting now if you bought an asset or bought inventory for ten dollars and now the net realizable value or NRV is equal to eight then you need to show the inventory on your books at eight so how do you what does net realizable value mean so net realizable value is basically how much you can sell the inventory net realizable value is how much you can sell the inventory for so that's a selling price minus any selling cost so if you can now sell your inventory for nine dollars and it costs one dollar to sell this would be the cost of making phone calls or transporting goods or so on whatever cost you need to incur in order to sell so that's this one dollar and your net realizable value would then be eight so that's how you calculate net realizable value that's an important term in the context of IFRS US gap uses lower of cost or market so here what this means is let's say that you can uh, you bought your item for ten dollars market value in the context of US gap is replacement cost so this means that that same inventory if you were to purchase again or replace the inventory if you could replace it for nine dollars that's me that means that's how much you could buy the inventory that same item for then the market value is nine and as long as this market value is lower than the cost price you need to write down your inventory uh, realize a loss and uh, show the inventory for nine dollars on your balance sheet notice that with commodities and agricultural goods prices can be reported above historical cost in general otherwise if an item has been initially shown at ten dollars and the price goes up then we cannot write up the prices but if prices or value goes down then we are supposed to write down exception as you see here however is commodity and agricultural goods where you are allowed to write up so now let's look at this in a little more detail first for IFRS with IFRS as you already saw we look at the lower of cost or NRV and you now know what NRV means if NRV is less than balance sheet cost the inventory is written down to NRV and loss is recognized so if in 2010 uh, you initially had a cost so inventory at ten dollars but then NRV is eight so you write down to eight so your balance sheet value for inventory becomes eight and in the 2010 income statement there would be a loss on revaluation of two dollars that shows up as one of the expenses in the income statement now if subsequent recovery in value so if subsequently the inventory is let's say the inventory now becomes nine the gain is recognized in the income statement but the amount of any such gain is limited to the amount previously recognized as a loss so what this means is if inventory becomes equal to nine then you can show a gain of one dollar on the income statement but if the inventory is worth uh, eleven dollars then the maximum that you can go up so in the market now or you can you know the the nrv now is up to eleven but on the balance sheet you cannot go above the original ten so the maximum you can go up to is ten and you recognize let's say it went up from 9 to 10 you again recognize a gain so the total gain you recognized is 2 and the point here is you can't recognize a gain more than this original loss that you recognized up here what does US gap say slightly more complicated but not too bad lower of cost of market 
and remember market is the replacement value market value has a upper limit of net realizable value and lower limit of nrv less a normal profit margin now what does this mean let's say that you initially have inventory valued at ten dollars and the value of the inventory goes down so let's say now that the market value is equal to nine so we so market value is nine so inventory will be revalued at nine but we need to do a small test to figure out whether this nine is acceptable and we need to check whether this market value falls within a range and that range is defined as follows upper limit is the net realizable value which we just talked about and let's say that the net realizable value for this case is equal to 9.5 and the lower limit is nrv less a normal profit margin so let's say that our normal profit margin in this context is two dollars so net realizable value minus the profit margin if the profit margin is two then this lower range is 7.5 so as long as the market price or the replacement value falls within this range then we are all right we can just log that log that as a new value on the balance sheet and recognize a one dollar loss if the market price falls below net realizable value then what we do is let's say that the market price came down to seven if the market price is seven then the lowest limit that we can come to is 7.5 so on the balance sheet we have to log 7.5 which is the lower limit in this range if the market price was 9.75 then there that again would be above this limit so there we would have to log the market price as 7. Point, as 9.5 in the balance sheet if the cost exceeds market inventory is written down to market on the balance sheet and loss is recognized so this is back to the original point so if we come down to inventory is equal to 9 so if the replacement cost is 9 we log the inventory as 9 and record a loss of $1 if there is a subsequent recovery then no write up is allowed so this is the substantial difference between us gap and ifrs us gap is more strict it just does not allow any write ups so even if from 9 we go back up to 9.5 we are not allowed to write up under us gap remember ifrs allows us to write up as long as uh, we do not exceed the original value now let's talk about inventory ratios you've seen some of these before the inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average inventory and then so essentially this is an activity ratio uh, from this we can derive number of days of inventory which is 365 over inventory turnover if you have a low turnover this indicates that inventory is too high and sign of obsolescence and potential write downs in future periods so high turnover ratio would mean that uh, so actually low turnover ratio means that cogs is low so you're not selling too much and average inventory is high so this is clearly not a very good sign so if an analyst sees relatively low inventory turnover ratios he should be watching out for potential obsolescence and potential write downs in future periods high turnover in general is good so high turnover would mean high cogs relative to inventory so high turnover is preferred as it also means so high turnover would mean a low value for number of days of inventory so this means that on average the company is maintaining low inventory so if turnover is too high so if this number is too high then that might potentially mean that the company ha is um, might be potentially losing sales because inventory levels are being kept too low so this also needs to be researched inventory ratios are used to evaluate the age of a firm's inventory and effectiveness of inventory management inventory ratios should not be viewed in isolation and should be compared with industry norms 
and inventory ratios are affected by the firm's choice of cost flow method as we will see on the next few slides so take a situation where we have rising prices what happens to the profitability ratio under lifo the cobs reported is higher which results in lower net income and therefore any profitability measure which includes cogs and that would be most profitably profitability measures will then be lower under lifo as compared to fifo so using lifo makes your profitability uh, ratio uh, worse liquidity ratio under the lifo method as you've seen earlier inventory is lower and all that is assuming rising prices so inventory is lower and lower inventory will cause a lower current ratio so remember current ratio is current assets over current liabilities current liabilities are not impacted by lifo or fifo under lifo current assets are lower and therefore the liquidity ratio will be lower activity ratios under lifo cogs is higher while inventory is lower thus inventory turnover is higher and the number of days of inventory is lower so lifo results in lower assets compared to fifo which means that debt to asset ratio is higher why because we have lower assets and so the overall ratio is higher and the same will be the case for debt to equity ratios presentation and disclosure ifrs requires certain disclosures related to inventory my suggestion is that you take a quick look at section 5 which is on page 388 in the 2011 curriculum but the basic idea is that a company must report which inventory valuation method is being used be it say lifo or specific identification if different methods are being used for different product lines that needs to be uh, stated actually this was not a good example because ifrs does not allow lifo so it would be better to say fifo or specific identification or weighted average cost so this needs to be specified the carrying value of inventory needs to be specified you need to have your different classifications such as raw material work in process finished goods inventory so all these classifications need to be made clear the cost of goods sold for every period needs to be shown if there are any write downs that needs to be shown remember ifrs allows refer reversals and if there are any reversals those need to be disclosed the carrying amount of inventory pledged as collateral needs to be disclosed and so on so these are the main points i think from an exam perspective as long as you know this you are in good shape but if you want to be extra diligent you can take a look at this section inventory method change the consistency of inventory costing is required under both ifrs and us gap so this means that let's say you have been using lifo we are talking about say a us gap company and you've been using lifo you can't suddenly change to fifo and if actually you can if there is a good reason so if for some reason you change to fifo and the reason is justified then a the change has to be justifiable and second historical reports then need to be restated so if you are using fifo in 2010 then you need to restate earlier reports with inventory shown as fifo so that the principle of comparability can still hold and that is it for this reading as i keep saying practice a lot your current curriculum has several good questions on this chapter so do those and also do as many questions as you can from your study notes